Hello, it's Hammy Time, and these are two of my hamster bin cages. In this video, I'll show you how I made them and share some of my opinions and tips on making and using bin cages. I'm using the Iris Holiday Tree Storage Bins. These are available from the container store here in the US. You can also get these from other stores like Target and Walmart online or in stores around Christmas time. The price varies a lot depending on where and when you get it. I got three of these secondhand from a thrift store, so I paid a lot less for mine. They are approximately 792 square inches of floor space. I say approximately because the sides taper out quite a bit, so the floor space technically varies depending on the level of bedding. To get the floor space, you multiply the length times the width measurements of the bottom of the bin. I made a rolling cart out of PVC pipe so I could stack the bins and still be able to open the bottom cage lid. It also allows me to see my hamster's burrows from the bottom of the bin. The room I keep my hamsters in is a multi-purpose room, so I have to be able to rearrange the room sometimes. This room is over my garage, so it can be hard to keep warm in the winter, and I have to move my hamsters to a warmer part of the house. The cart makes it easy to move them. I use bins because they're easy to get, easy to DIY, and easy to move around. One problem I've had with bin cages is that some hamsters will chew on the plastic. When I made this cage with the windows, I was in a big rush. I made it for my Syrian hamster, Bernie. He was in this double-decker cage at the time. The only thing he chewed on was the plastic hinges on the door. Without the hinges, the door would just fall off. I estimated I had about a day to make a new cage before he destroyed the door, so I didn't think it through very well. If I had, I would have eliminated the windows. I wanted windows to add more ventilation, but I think the lids provide enough. The windows are a potential chewing hazard, so I had to frame out the inside with pieces of wood. The frames are strips of basswood I got from the craft store. Untreated basswood is safe to chew on. When Bernie was in this cage, he never chewed on the wood, and Mia chewed on the wood around the door a little bit. But the current resident, Evie, she devours it. I had to put stainless steel mending plates around the windows and doors to prevent her from chewing through to the plastic. She has a lot of chew toys, she just seems to like the windows and door frames better. Another problem I have with bin cages is they're really not big enough. The iris bin has the most floor space, but it's a little too shallow for the setup I want to create. It's only 13 and a half inches high, which includes the sides of the lid, so the bin minus the lid is really only 11 and a quarter inches high. It limits the level of bedding I can put in. I can't put bedding up to the top because when the lid is open, my hamster Theo likes to signal he wants to come out by trying to climb the walls, and I worry he'll fall out. He's in the top bin. The Sterilite Clear 50 Gallon Bin is another good bin option because it's tall and can fit several inches of bedding. It has approximately 760 square inches of floor space and it's 17 and 3 quarter inches tall. It would work well for a deep bedding setup. I like to use old cage parts to make bin cages and I was able to use a door from an old critter trail cage. I cut the wire with my Dremel. Despite the chewing, the door has been worth the trouble. My hamsters really appreciate being able to come and go as they choose. Originally the cage was on the floor, so when I made the cart, I had to make a deck and ramp. The door and ramp open up to the playpen so they can run back and forth. Theo, my dwarf hamster, has to hitch a ride down on my hand or tissue box. He has a separate playpen because he and Evie often want to come out at the same time. I should mention that I don't have cats or dogs, so I can have an open playpen like this and not worry about my hamsters being disturbed. I added hinges to the lid because it makes it so much easier to open and close them. Without them I had to completely remove them and put them back on multiple times, so it was well worth the time and effort to put them in. To hold open the bottom lid, I attached some small bungee cords to the cart that hooks onto the lid. I made each cage a little different. The cage with the door and windows is trimmed out with strips of wood covered in foil tape and pieces of tin. The top trim are strips of wood covered in foil tape, and the window and doors on the front are strips of wood covered in pieces of tin from tin pans from the dollar store. The tin pans from the dollar store are thin and easy to cut with regular scissors. The little rivets are stick-on embellishments I got from the craft store and painted silver to match. The window trim is glued on with hot glue, and the lid trim is attached with screws. The trim isn't necessary, but I did it to cover up the sharp edges of the wire mesh. The wire mesh, or hardware cloth, is sewn on with wire. I chose to sew it on with wire because I wanted a tight seal and a flat surface to cover up with the trim. A simpler way to attach the wire mesh is to use cable ties. They're cheap and very easy to use. 
I chose not to use them for the iris bin cages because when they're cut down the edges can be very sharp and I've scratched myself up enough times to want to try an alternative. Another alternative is to attach the wire mesh or bars with machine screws, washers, and nuts. I use machine screws and nuts to attach the trim on the lids of the iris bins. When I use cable ties, I make sure to put the smooth side on the inside of the lid. I do this to prevent injuries to my hamsters. Spider hamsters could scratch themselves on the sharp cut ends. The cart is made from one inch PVC pipe. The bins just sit on top. They're not attached so they can move, but the weight of the bins and the risers on the bottom ends help keep it from sliding off. I made the wheels by drilling a hole in a PVC pipe end cap. I inserted a threaded stem caster wheel and secured it with a washer and nut. I did glue the pipes together so it could be taken apart and reconfigured if I ever need to. I spray painted it silver to make it look more like metal. I got the PVC pipes and connectors from a home improvement store in the plumbing section. The four-way connectors are from an online PVC supply store. The tool I use the most for making bin cages is my Dremel. I use diamond wheels to cut the plastic and wire or bars. I prefer the Dremel because it makes clean and fast cuts. My only issue is that the plastic collects onto the wheel and I have to keep cleaning it off. I used to use a hot knife which is a soldering iron with a blade tip. The hot knife makes a clean cut but it's very slow. You have to go slow to cut all the way through. My issue with the hot knife is the fumes from the melting plastic. You can cut the plastic with a utility knife, but it usually takes several cuts to cut all the way through and it often cracks the plastic. The trick is to be very patient and go slow. I've seen people use an oscillating tool to cut the plastic, which looks like it works pretty good. I don't have one, so I've never tried it. The wire and bars can be cut with wire cutters and tin snips. I use the Dremel because it's less strain on my hands. The tin snips cut the hardware cloth more like scissors, but you need strong hands to do it. The wire cutters cut the wire one snip at a time. They don't work well for cutting bars. The PVC pipe is cut with PVC cutters. I drilled the holes with my Dremel. You can drill holes with a power drill, but sometimes they can cause the plastic to crack. I use a regular screwdriver for the screws. I used a hot glue gun to attach some of the trim. I always use crafting non-toxic hot glue. The industrial hot glue is not non-toxic. I use files to file down the cut plastic to get smooth edges. I make sure to wear my safety glasses. These fit over my prescription glasses. I wear these when I use my Dremel and when I'm working with hardware cloth. I once scratched my glasses when a roll of hardware cloth rolled back up into my face. It's a good idea to wear gloves when working with hardware cloth. You need to be very careful with it because the ends are sharp and can scratch you. I always wear a dust mask when I'm cutting and filing because I don't want to breathe in any little particles. I made each bin cage a little different. I got video of me making the third bin cage. This one does not have a door or side windows. It has a hinged lid with wire mesh and ornamental tin trim. The first thing I did was draw it where I wanted to cut with a Sharpie pen and then cut it out with my Dremel. I'm using a half inch diamond wheel. Here's some of the plastic that accumulates on the blade. I just pick it off as I go and sometimes I have to use a lighter to melt it off. I cut two panels out and left a strip in the center to help keep the structure intact. I used a flat file to remove the burrs and smooth out the edges. I use quarter inch wire hardware cloth. You can find it in garden centers at home improvement stores. I laid out the wire mesh over the lid and marked out where to cut the wire. I cut out the wire mesh with my Dremel using an eighth inch diamond wheel. Normally I would do this outside, but it was too cold out at the time.
I used my Dremel to drill the holes. I used a small drill bit to drill holes to insert the wire through. I used 24 gauge wire. I use wire to sew on the hardware cloth because it makes it tight and flat so I can cover it up with trim. I used ornamental tin ribbon for the trim. I got it from a craft store. I used tin snips to cut it. I drilled the holes making sure not to drill through the wire. I used number six three eight inch long machine screws and nuts to attach the tin trim. It was easier to punch holes in the tin separately and then drill the holes in the plastic. To be able to open the lid with hinges, I had to cut off the backside part that hangs over. I filed it down to get it as flat as possible. I used number six half inch long machine screws to attach three hinges. I marked where to drill, drilled the holes, and then put on the hinges.
And here's my completed cage. I hope you found this video helpful and maybe it gave you some ideas for your bin cage. Thank you for watching. <laughs> you furry boy. Come on, Theo. Here. Theo, come on. Let's go in here. Go in here. Oh, Theo, come on. No. Come on. <laughs> Evie, come on. Are you coming? Goodness. Baby, come on, go the other way. You really want that ramp. There you go. She likes that ramp. <laughs>